In this video, we are going to discuss a very important use case of data blending in Google Data Studio and why it is important because the data source involved in this use case is Google Ads. And as you know that Google Ads happens to be one of the popular data sources which is used with Google Data Studio. So let's look at why we need data blending and why it's so important for uh, Google Ads in Google Data Studio. All right. So the use case that uh, we are going to look at involves reporting of conversions, different conversions by camping. Okay, so this is a use case. So the client or the business has requested you that I want to see different conversions by camping. Now, what I mean by, by different conversions. So in Google Ads, there can be different conversions that you are tracking. So it can be, let's say, a sign up. It can be a non bounce event. It can be a purchase, it can be add to cart, it can be checkout, X, Y, Z, it can be a download link click, it can be a download. So there can be numerous conversions that you want to track with the uh, uh, Google ads, right to optimize the campaigns. Now, what happens that uh, there are different campaigns that are being run for uh, different conversions, but some campaign would have would have all the conversions, right? So we want to see a breakup of different conversions by different campaigns, right? Now, an easy way to do this if the requirement is only to report the conversion numbers by the campaigns is to use the pivot table, right? So it's a very easy way to do that. So what we can do, we can take a pivot table, right? Wherein the row dimension can be campaign and the column dimension can be a important dimension in the name of segment type name, okay? Uh, segment conversion type name. So what segment conversion type name reports, it reports all the individual conversions. So for example, this becomes an individual conversion, this becomes an individual conversion. So all the conversions that you're tracking. So you can simply use conversions as a metric or all conversions as a metric. And then you can view campaign wise individual conversions, right? So that can be done through a pivot table. But let's assume that the business also wants to see the cost per individual conversion, right? The business wants to see the conversion rate by individual conversion. Then that cannot be done through a pivot table. You cannot do that through a pivot table. Okay. So in such a case, the only option that's left with us is data blending. All right. So let's look at how data blending can help us in this particular use case. So to create a da blended data source, simply go to manage blended data right and then click on add data view right now understand this thing that data blending in google data studio is done through a left join mechanism so what is left join so first you have to create a base data wherein all the values that you put in this base data will be part of the final data that gets created the blended overall data set that involves multiple data sets with different conditions okay so here this is a base data and whatever we put over here, all the things would get involved in the uh, in the overall data set that eventually gets created. So the first thing that we want to create and here, uh, whatever we put in would act as a join key between the different data sources that we put over here. So here, the first thing that we put is day, right? Because you want to see the daily data and also you have a date selector on top. So you want to see the uh, data points by different dates. The second thing that we want to put over here is campaign because we want to see the performance by various campaigns, right? So that is the second thing that we want to put. The metrics that you want to have in the overall data set, which is come, needs to come from here without any particular conditions, would be something like impressions, because you want to see overall impressions. You want to see clicks, right? Because if you want to see uh, the click to conversion ratio, then you need the clicks, right? And you want to see cost because you want to see the cost of uh, individual conversions. Right. So these things, as you can see, are becoming part of your overall data set. And this is directly coming from the main uh, Google ads data source. It is not having any conditions. So whatever was there in the original data source as it is will come here as well without any conditions. Right now, the next table that you add over here, we are again going to use a Google ads only because now we want the conversions data. OK, now these become the join keys. So for the dates and the campaigns which are present in this campaign, in this data source, in the left one, only those data points will get 
filtered in from this data source as well. So if there are any campaigns which are not present in this data source, they will also not be included in this data source. That's why when we include the overall data over here without any conditions. So here we do not have any conditions. So by default, it's including all the campaigns. Hence, all the campaigns will get included here as well. But we can put in certain additional conditions to extract only certain uh, key points over here. So the metric that we want over here is all conversions. Okay, but here again, we will use the segment type name, uh, the segment conversion type name dimension. Okay, so the segment conversion type name. And here what we can do, we can put the individual uh, conversions that we have. So for example, I can simply put that it includes download. This can be different for your use case, but I'm just giving an example that you can put it like this, right? So here now, what do we have? We have the, uh, all the, all the conversions that include download, right? Similarly, if you want to add other uh, conversions. So again, repeat the same thing, same thing that uh, your day and campaign from the overall will get mapped over here. And then metrics again, you can include all conversions. And the filter can be updated, you can create a new filter, wherein you can say that uh, SMS conversion. Okay, so include segment conversion type name contains SMS, right? And save this. Now, the next thing that you need to do is if you over look over here, what, what do you see? All conversions table to all conversions table three, which is not very business, uh, business friendly. So you can change the name over here. So here you can name it downloads, right? And here you can name it SMS links. Okay, so let's name the data source. So you can put a uh, blended conversions, Google ads, so just to let you remember that this is the objective of this particular data source, this particular blended data source that you're creating. Now, you clicked on save. And it's processing behind the scenes. So once it turns blue, that means it's ready for us. Or maybe it's ready for us. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So now I'll just create a simple table. Okay. And uh, sorry. So add a chart, add a table and the data source that we want to include over here is the new blended data source that we have created. So what was that? It was blended conversions, right? Now here we want camping, right? We want clicks. Or oh, we want impressions, we want cost, and then we want our individual conversion. So we want downloads and we want uh, SMS. Right? See, so in the same table, now you have clicks. You have impressions, you have cost converted, you have downloads, you have SMS links, which was not possible if you would have used the default Google Ads connector. Now further, you can create calculated fields on top of it. So if you want to see the conversion rate or cost per conversion for downloads, now this is blended data source, so you will need to put in the aggregation function again over here, which is by default present in the uh, regular connector, but here you would have to put it. So cost per convert, the cost divided by some downloads. 
Now since there are certain nulls, I am not sure whether it will get picked or not. But uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, so it's working. So as you can see, now for individual campaigns as well, you have cost per download. Right? Wherever it was null, it's coming as null. Wherever the download happened, you can see the cost per download as well. Similarly, you can create uh, the conversion rates. So for example, or uh, SMS conversion rate, you can put sum and here you want to see SMS and you want to see sum clicks and this is going to be a percentage just apply that right so now you have the sms conversion rate as well so like this you can create a blended data source and uh, you can get the data for individual conversions and you can further enrich that data by adding uh, created calculated fields like cost per conversion and co conversion rate for individual conversions Right now, something similar can be done for uh, Google ads as well, wherein you want to see the stepwise conversion rate, but uh, it is not available by default. So you have to use the funnel steps and create a blended data source over here as well. And that can also be done. So in this case, what, what you would notice as an interesting use case, at least it interests me, is that it is not a blended data source. Usually people assume that it is blending of two different data sources right but here we are not blending two different data sources we are creating a manipulation in the same data source by extracting uh, different conditions of the same data source and blending that to create a new data source to solve a use case and particularly for google ads this becomes a very important use case so i hope uh, you found this helpful and uh, i would love to know your thoughts on this keep learning